This is Doug Gosen, and welcome back to our last episode in this series on DDI, or Data Driven Instruction. And in this one, we want to talk about reteaching with modeling and guided discourse. And why is reteaching important? Well, look at this. All the quality assessments and deep analysis are meaningless if we don't act. Until we teach differently, learning won't change. Let's face it, we don't always get it the first time, and neither do our students. And so we need to be prepared and think of a way to reteach concepts, reteach skills, so that our students can get it the second, or maybe even the third or fourth time. Okay? So, modeling and guided discourse are two very effective ways for doing this. In modeling, the students see and hear what it is that they need to do. In guided discourse, they have a discussion of looking at two examples and discover why it is that this one's right and this one's wrong. So, let's talk about each one of these. In modeling, the first thing is the teacher needs to set a very clear expectation. What will the students do while the teacher is modeling? Will they be taking Taking notes? Will they be copying on their own paper what the teacher is doing in front of them? But they need to have a very clear expectation. We don't want them just sitting there and just watching and doing nothing. All right. But while the teacher is modeling, the teacher is not asking questions and getting answers from students. What the teacher is doing is working through the problem as if they were the student. And, but they're thinking out loud while they're doing it. That way the students can both see what to do and hear the thinking involved in the process. After this, students need their own opportunity with a different problem, but similar, to practice what they just witnessed. And hopefully after seeing it and hearing it, they'll be able to do it correctly. That's modeling. Guided discourse is different. In guided discourse, the students are having a discussion. So the first thing is they're going to need two examples. They're going to need usually an excellent example or exemplar and one that's not as good. And they're going to talk about these two examples. They're going to have a discussion in which they're going to try to figure out why is this one right and why is this one wrong? What is it that this one did that this one did not do? Okay, what should this one have changed in order to get it right? So they have this discussion among themselves, discovering what is it is that they need to do in order to get it right. And then, of course, after that, they have an opportunity to practice with a similar question using what it is that they just learned through the discussion. That's guided discourse. Now, which one? This is often the, the struggle that a lot of teachers have. Which one should I use? Should I model or should I guided discourse? Because let me tell you right now, guided discourse is the stickier one. It's the one that tends to stick with the students and last longer. And so I think it's a preferred way to go, but it may not work with your students. So let's look at what you need in order to do each one of these, okay? In order to have guided discourse, I mean, the first thing you need to have is two examples. You need to have a good example, an exemplar, and you need to have one that's not so good, in which the students can look at those and discuss them. You also need your students to be capable of having high quality discussions. It has to be something more than just, oh, I like this one, or and I don't like this one, or this one's good and this one's bad. They need to be able to look and see the details. And so they may need some training on how to have a discussion like that or see an example of that, um, in which they can look at an answer and figure out why is this one right and why is this one not right? They have to be able to have that discussion in guided discourse. Now, what if they're not capable of this or what if you don't have a good example? Well, that's kind of your, your two things for modeling. Modeling would be a better approach for you to take if, well, if you've got some classroom behavior problems, the students aren't ready to have discussions like that among themselves. So they're just not ready to be focused like that. And so they need something like the teacher to, to watch and be more focused on that's a good time to use modeling, okay? Also, if you don't have that good example, the teacher could then create one for them through the modeling. And so that would also be a good time to use modeling with your students. When you really feel that they're not ready to discuss it, they need to just see it and hear it right now, then use modeling, okay? So modeling and data discourse though can both be done as a whole group, the entire class, or in a small group. 
You don't have to pick one or the other. The, you can have a discussion with the whole class or a discussion with a small group. And same thing, you can model to the entire class or just model to a small group of students. Don't think that you have to do one or the other. You can do both. So that's modeling and guided discourse. Two excellent ways to reteach what it is that the students didn't get the first time. Those concepts that they need to see again, those steps they need to see again, those skills they need to practice over again. All right. Thank you for joining us. Bye now.